Hey Mel, what you doing? I knew you were going to do that. <clears throat> Look at this. Tried a different braiding system. Look what I got. Nice. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so me and Melanie were literally just talking about, let's do actual real marriage mornings where uh, we talk about real stuff and we have an, a, an idea called marriage modeling. So this is what we're doing. I didn't tell her I was going to do it, but she kind of had the idea. <laughs> So, let's hurry up, girlfriend. Let's I go. I gotta put this headband in. Goodness well, everybody's already Ooh, yeah. everybody's already seen you, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> look at my uh, hair. What is going on? So look at this, guys. Look out our bedroom window. Do you see those? Those are elk. There's nine of them back there. If you're a hunter, don't be jealous. I'm jealous, but I'm Melanie. Jealous. I need you to come on. You got like my camera I, set up? I am. I just, this is too much. My hair is ridiculous. So, you guys, today we're going to talk about, again, <clears throat> prayer, being intentional, and gratitude. So, come and join WASS. I love your rubber band system. It is pretty good, isn't it? I like your thought sketch around the board. I learned it. <laughs> All right. Now, to the lighted studio. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I can't with my hair. Whatever. All right. What's up, Jamo Phantom? Coach Superman. Whoa, there she goes. <laughs> do it again. I might fall if I do it again. Woo! Oh, boy. All right. I've been inspired. I'm inspired Good morning, my here. friends. That's right. All right. Welcome to Marriage Mornings. My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, if you're new to joining us. And Melanie? What's I'm Hair Pile. I'm his wife, Melanie Studley. And I'm an audio engineer, and I'm glad that you're here. Good That's right. morning. All right, we start every morning off with a prayer, a gratitude, and an intention. And lately, we've been just doing random gratitudes, random intentions, but we're getting back to saying why I'm thankful for my spouse, Keep on talking. right? <laughs> and saying what our intention is with our spouse, and that's what we're going to do today. But my spouse went away, so I mean, don't second. know where she is. So I'll just fill up time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that rhymed. Hey, what's up, Brad? Good morning. Okay. All right. Prayer. Ready? Thank you, God, Creator, for your blessings. Uh, Jesus, I pray that you uh, give us spiritual protection today, uh, spiritually and physically, God. I pray that you be with people who have been affected negatively by COVID-19. I pray that we are able to reframe this and uh, take this moment as an opportunity, no matter what has happened to us, but to... Um, make uh, a message out of this mess and to push forward uh, together in a good way. Amen. Amen. I should probably turn the dryer off. It's loud. Uh, I don't think so. So, all right. Tell me what you're thankful for about this guy. Uh, <laughs> so let me say this again. We're doing our prayer, our mm -hmm. gratitude, and our intention. But we had been kind of just doing like any intention, any gratitude. But I said we, that when you were going. We forgot that we were trying to do it for marriage specifically. So I'm mm -hmm. changing my gratitude. I am thankful for uh, just how fun you make things. Like yesterday, we did. We're doing seventy. I'm doing seventy-five hard. You're doing phase one, mm -hmm. thirty-day thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yesterday, we had to do our outside workouts, and or we got to do them. We have to. And so we went to the church and ran around with our kiddos, and it was so much fun. Um, and like when I would feel tired, you would encourage me, uh, which mm -hmm. is kind of a, it's not like a new thing, but it's new that we're doing that. And I'm just it's really new that we're thankful. doing it differently, like. To quit being more intentional about it. I've done it before, you know, and oh, what was that? Yeah, oh, I've done, I gotta coach you. I've done it before. <laughs> Just well, whatever. Me. So, anyway, I'm thankful that you're doing a 75 hard, and that may be weird. Like, oh, I'm thankful that you're getting in shape. No, you've always been in shape, but I am thankful that that's gonna give us something more in common, mm -hmm. I guess, and I'm thankful that you're letting me. Not not coach you, but just give you encouragement yeah. around that. I, I find it helpful, and I find it fun. And I think it is. I'm also thankful because the kids see it. That's a great thing for mm -hmm. our kids to see, yeah. us encouraging each other and supporting things, even something almost as silly as diet. Like mm -hmm. the kids are watching us support <clears throat> each other in, oh, daddy doesn't eat this because it's, you know, no cheat days or no whatever. Right. So that, that's an important thing. So thank, thank you. High five to that. High five. Um, intention. What are your marriage intentions and your self-intentions for today? 
marriage intentions <clears throat> today. Let's see. Oh boy. Uh, to be present with you and to also tell you if there's something on my mind that may be conflictual, right? Because being a number nine on the Enneagram, when I avoid conflict, that's not good for me and it's not good for people around me and that's something that I've learned about myself. So if I actually have like, hey, don't do that kind of thing or like, hey, I've been thinking about this, I'm going to tell you. All right, I'll right? be ready. No, I'm, I'm just saying that there, there may not be anything, but if there is, I'm not going to skirt around it. I'm going to step up and say it. So if I see you doing this, I know you're skirting around an issue. <laughs> uh, <ooh. laughs> okay, got it. Uh, I like that. That's a good way to be intentional. Okay. Um, so for me, I think uh, intentional in terms of marriage stuff, I want to be more outwardly expressive of how gratitudinous I am, how grateful I am for mm -hmm. you. Um, even like this morning, mm -hmm. I hugged you, I made funny jokes and was being silly, but mm -hmm. that is an intention that I have to be more, uh, what is the word, like positively encouraging just mm -hmm. of our relationship. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds weird, but I think as a mom, especially right now, like as a mom, I forgot my hair looks really terrible. That's crazy. Um, right now as a mother, sense. it is very hard. Like there's so many distracting things going on. You've got kids who are trying to do homeschooling stuff. You've got mm -hmm. a dog that's chewing on shoes or whatever. Uh, you got all these things going on and so my brain switches into this sort of unfeeling, strategy driven, get Dude, crap done yeah. mom. And that's not super helpful to our marriage. It doesn't model great things for our kids either. Mm -hmm. So for me, my intention is like, celebrate the moment, celebrate you now, mm -hmm. right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And try to do that, incorporate that into everything um, in a way that's natural and sort of helpful mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. so those yeah. are my intentions good okay. all right um, good <clears throat> dang it we didn't do those where's your phone ah. it's in there we'll have to do it so tomorrow. today we wanted to talk about nature versus nurture and of course mm -hmm. because you know i am obsessed mm. with jocko willink <laughs> it is a chapter in his book that i mean like a pair a page i don't know it's a page from discipline discipline equals freedom mm -hmm. and again if you need a free audiobook, go to audiblechild.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. You can get this audiobook for free on us because we love you. Mm -hmm. But uh, this chapter I was reading yesterday and it really kind of struck me um, that we often use things like, well, I grew up like that as an excuse mm -hmm. or I, did, I wasn't taught that. Family of origin or mm -hmm. I've always been that way. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Oh, I'm just that way. Or she or he is just, oh, they just do that. Or my biggest excuse was like, that's just not my personality. Mm -hmm. That's just not how I am or who I am. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it or whatever. Right. And so I wanted to talk about this idea of nature versus nurture and kind of look at it from, because all of this is military, but apply it to family and marriage. So this says, what is more important, nature or nurture? In my opinion, neither. I have seen people from every strata of life in the military. I worked with every strata, sorry. Uh, in the military, I've worked with every type of person, Ivy League kids with silver spoons, hood rats, prep school kids, kids from blue collar families, blah, 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 kids who are abused, everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, and with all of those different types of people, there are good and bad, successful and unsuccessful. And in working with business, I see the same thing, people from every walk of life, from the bottom to the top, and I have seen every type of person be successful. So to me, it is not about nature or nurture, it is about choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he goes on to say, like, you choose to become who you are right. with your behaviors every single day. And I really love, I mean, the eight Enneagram in me who mm. loves military stuff. Like, mm. get in there, like, yell in your face, structured, structured do it. That's like, funny. I wish I'd have known about, I wish I'd have known I liked this earlier. Mm. I mean, maybe I would be a really hard A person if I'd known I don't that. Know. But um, I just love this concept of, like, you're letting your you know, your, how I was raised, that's an excuse. And mm -hmm. early, like we talked about last time, there are excuses don't get to have a vote. Right. Like your n nature doesn't get to have a vote in who mm -hmm. you become as a person mm -hmm. if you are being intentional about it. Right. What are your thoughts on that? So uh, I come at it from a, a psychological, <laughs> psychotherapy point of view, like nature versus nurture. Of course, we have our biology. Of course, we have our family of origin. And some people have different perspectives because of their nurture, right? Some people have different perspectives because of their nature. And I'm thinking of that quote, you know, you can't be what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And sometimes nature, 
your environment doesn't allow you, doesn't afford you certain things to see, right? So like what wasn't modeled in my family was like, I was the first one to ever graduate college ever in my entire history on both sides, right? Yeah. So that wasn't, that wasn't uh, natured, I guess. That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't nurtured for me, right? I mean, people talked about it and stuff, but I had no prior examples of yeah. that. So, so I'm thinking about other communities who may not uh, have different role models of these things. So that's, I, I would disagree a little bit with that, but I very highly agree with like, okay, it is a choice, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we're all exposed because of TV or culture. It's like, oh, that person went to college, that person made it, that person mm -hmm. came up here from way down here, yeah. right? So there is, there is knowledge of it at least. So I agree with that part, but sometimes nature versus nurture, it's just like, it, it may not be in my nature, my biological makeup, to be a superstar athlete with amazing muscle mind coordination kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. But I think it is a choice. So if I wanted to improve my basketball skills, then it would be a choice. Well, I just I go practice every day and do these moves and watch videos and all this stuff. So I may not be great, but I could improve mm -hmm. a level, and that is a choice. So mm -hmm. I do I do believe in it. On that part so um, it's not in your nature to have a crappy marriage it's not in your nature to be a selfish jerk mm -hmm. or a complaining be all the time that's not in your nature right that's a choice that may have been modeled for you but it absolutely is a choice for you to step out of that mm -hmm. into something different that's a choice so when you're right you're exactly right when people say oh I'm just like that or my dad was that way, or like, I don't know, my mom was that way. That is a lame excuse that does not get a vote. At mm -hmm. least it doesn't get a vote in our family, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get a vote with our kids either. And you yourself shouldn't let it get, should not let it get a vote in your own psyche. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think for years, like almost all of our marriage, that stuff was the loudest voter in my, mm -hmm. uh, in myself personally. And then it impacted our relationship. It impacted our parenting and everything because I would say to Seth, Oh, I'm not like that. You want me to be like your mom? Well, I'm not like that. I wasn't raised in the South. Mm -hmm. I was, and I had all these excuses, mm -hmm. like a laundry list of excuses. Mm -hmm. What is a laundry list even? That's a funny thought. I had this huge list I of I have to wash my pants <laughs> and, and my, my socks. <laughs> oh! Nobody writes down their... their... <laughs> That's a really funny thought. But um, I had this huge list of um, all of these excuses that were basically uh, how I was, you know, nurtured or the nature that I, the nature of how I grew up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was everything from, well, my family doesn't do that or my... We don't say I'm sorry. We don't feel like we have to. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do it. And it was such a... Um, it's such a terrible way to live, and then it's such a terrible thing to model for mm -hmm. your children. Like, well, I just can't do it because that's not what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Like, where's your grit? Where's your intention? How do you get past exactly where you are then if you don't do the things you don't do? Right. Right? How dumb is that? It'd be like, <laughs> it'd be like a flower saying, well, I don't grow above the soil, so, <laughs> you know. Well, know, then just... you don't grow. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Then you don't grow. You I'm going to say something that's totally off topic, but I, I thought about this the other day. It's random, but I really, really love this concept. So I, we've been planting things at our house and doing homeschooling. And one of the things that we did was Hattie had, um, our seven-year-old has these sunflower seeds from her sunflower from her kindergarten, I think. Three years ago. Two or three years ago. Or two years ago. And um, we had been saving them to plant them. And so we planted 62 sunflower seeds in all these little pots. We made little pots because our dog ate the ones we bought, all these things. And I did this, I had this thought, I was like, oh, we planted 62 sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. How many, you know, if 62 sunflowers grow, how many seeds will each one of those sunflowers produce? Mm. And so I Googled it. Like 6,200? Uh, how many seeds do you think one sunflower head produces? I think a low estimate, 100, high, 200. It's like... A thousand. It is so many. It's really? un yes, it That's is crazy. unbelievable. So we did the math on it, like it would be like sixty two thousand, whatever, right? right? And then I thought, that's what like wisdom is. That's is. what education is. You are right now getting a seed that you can choose to plant and it will produce a bunch more fruit, seeds, whatever, wisdom, good things in your family, or don't. Or not. Or don't plant it. Or don't water yeah. the ones you plant, right? And it just kind of struck me as I was doing that with the kids and thinking about, like, that is 
that idea of like a generational curse or how about a generational blessing? Let's, mm-hmm. Why don't we think about that? Like right. how do we give knowledge and wisdom? We model good things for our kids. How do we do that in a way that will benefit them but then will help them produce those same things to benefit others? Right. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's just something that keeps like popping back up in my head as, I'm, as I look at our sunflower starts and I think about nature as I'm homeschooling mm-hmm. um, and all of these things. And I just think it's really important to think about like – the way that we, hello, <laughs> the way that we, um, like we have the power within us by every action we take every single day to plant that wisdom in ourselves, right. nurture it in each other and in ourselves and in our children. And it just is a matter of the choice of doing it, knowing that it's a choice and then taking the steps to actually do it. Right. Cause what a gift that is. Yeah. Right. It's, it's huge. Um, I always think of that, uh, well, no, I'm not going not gonna to say that. I think of, like, there's so many examples in nature because we're just part of nature, right? And in, in therapy, in psychotherapy, I do a lot of experiential outdoor <clears throat> therapeutic interventions with kids and with adults and stuff like that. And if you just take the time to look around to, like, trees or sunflowers or flood stages of a river, like you know what with coronavirus and stuff like our whole society our world really is in a flood stage ah things are crazy there's giant logs coming down the thing don't get in the river right now right there's a lot of change the 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 rivers are changing courses and all this stuff it's a dangerous time right but guess what what happens to floods they always secede Mm -hmm. secede i don't know they always seed you seed is not the right word c-e-d-e that is not a I word. Think, I think it is. The, the subside. The floodwaters subside, right? They go down. And just like uh, crisis in marriages, crises in family, crises okay. in like an accident or anything. Sure, there's that time when stuff is crazy. S is hitting the fan all over the place. But it always slows down. So take a minute to remember that. Things always slow down, right? Thank you, Dana. What's up, Ira? What's up, Brad? Um... Things always slow down, right? I don't know what that had to do with seeding, planting seeds. Is this the word seed? So, <laughs> no, it's just the idea of uh, taking those lessons from a sunflower seed or from nature, oh, stuff from like that. Right. And I got like right. on a tangent kind of thing. But yeah, That's if, one, if one seed can produce 10,000 seeds. 2,000. One seed can produce 2,000 If seeds. one seed can produce a, a lot of other seeds, <laughs> then your words can produce good fruit or bad fruit, mm-hmm. right? My, my words to you, produce or not produce. Yep. Produce or actually Kill. damage. Yeah, right? they get hurt. harm um, or help. Our, our words to our friends, our words to you guys, your, your words to us. When we get like a weird, stupid review that talks about like, oh, your levels are too... I was like, what? Whatever. But... That's focusing focusing on the wrong things. Mm-hmm. If, if I like say bad word, not bad words, but like non encouraging words to the kids, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna say non encouraging words to their brother and sister, and then I'm gonna yell at them for that. But I guess what? am it's to blame fault. for teaching our children that trick. It's great. I have to fix that. Yeah, and thanks for that. It is my it is my fault. Um, Ooh, extreme ownership. Extreme ownership. So here's the thing that I'm going to challenge y'all to do today. Um, we forgot to do our Get Your Marriage On app conversation starter. So I want you to go right now to getyourmarriageon.com and get our app. Or you can go to anatomyofmarriage.com and look for the little button that says get the app or whatever. There's like a thing on our website. But our app we made because we love people and we love good marriages and we love strong, healthy families. So go to getyourmarriageon.com and get the app. <laughs> what? Recede. The waters recede. Recede. How, how, <laughs> thank you. And how weird is that that neither one of us can think of I don't it? Know. They seed. Um, but anyway, so we want you to get the app because there are free conversation starters within the app. Yes, mm-hmm. you have to pay for the real full thing because why on earth should it be free? Mm-hmm. Uh, all of this is free. I hate it when people are like, what, I gotta pay? Yes, you gotta pay. But anyway, so get the free app, get the conversation starters, and start talking to one another. Now is the perfect time to do this when you have nothing else to do or you're stressed out. Or you want a way to connect and there's, you know, you can't go to play bingo anymore, whatever you do. Bowling? We all play bingo. Um, So go do that. That is task number one that you have to do. The second one is do your marriage mornings together. Mm -hmm. So do your prayer, do your gratitude for your spouse, and do your intentions for your marriage and your relationships and your family, right? If you don't have a spouse, do it with yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And then read everything from Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. It is worth having. It is worth... Yeah! That's right! That's right. We need more yous in the world to tell everyone that Get Your Marriage On is worth it. Because we value what we pay for. That's right. We value more what we pay for. That's exactly so. right. And we have more apps coming uh, that I'm so excited about. Really good ones. Okay. So we love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Do your marriage morning stuff together. Encourage others. Invite other people to watch this. Invite other people to this community. Share the podcast. Write a review of our show so that one who says I'm a terrible person can... I don't have to say it anymore. <laughs> Why you about said something else. No, I didn't. Yes, I just you did. didn't. What are you talking about? I didn't. Um, <clears throat> anyway. All right. So. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye.